his pocket say oh, 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 It's day 13, and the royalties had an early start as they prepared for their morning workout. to the World Food Court wearing colorful fresh and famous merchandise as they had the fresh and famous bread. Amazingly, today is the fresh and famous day, a rather interesting breakfast. Royal reality, this is reality. The royalties had a very intense rehearsal 
of a playlet for one of our partners, the Fresh and Famous Bread. Tomorrow, it's a day for one of our partners. They're going to rehearse a playlet using fresh and famous bread as a theme. So, sing, sing, that's, sing. that's what we're So, eventually, when the man is going yeah, out, okay. maybe probably for a road walk. I want to bring it. Probably for a road walk. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And I asked all you, now the bread now. <laughs> so, when he was going out, probably for a road walk. He saw that bread outside, a woman selling this bread. Mm -hmm. So he was like, wow, so I don't have to drive all the way to shop right just to get this bread. I can get it anywhere around the world, around the town. And then he was happy, and then we... He got the bread from the bread. He got the bread. He got Everyone will eat it. How um, many minutes drama? This is not even five, five minutes. Five minutes. minutes. Yeah. Hey, three three the drama should be... Uh, five within, five minutes. Five minutes. Know, within, what do you think? Three to four minutes. Even the singing is not something that we too... Oh, yeah. 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 Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah, reality, oh. Hey. This is reality, oh. Okay, so last time you had a talk on the positive and negative effects of social media in society. Your fans and the, and the audience to watch. So after watching. And of course, from the comments that we had, Game Changers came out with 10%. Jesus. Don't clap again. And Alpha, 
Actually, I'm finished a payment. Just Wait, let me just go to the house and pick up something. <laughs> I, need to, I need to go and pick up something. Next person. Just Next wait. person. Just wait. Wait here. Let me go to the house. She's going to see that. Let me go to the house. This is not fine. Come to the doctor right now. Oh, this is useless now, so I think that they go to the doctor. Push another person to go see the doctor. Now calm down, you're going to take your mask. Please, 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 I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. Um, aside from the bread, did you take any of the same today? Oh, my God. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get into it. Okay. Um, you don't need to go to the toilet. Oh, wow. That's serious. Okay. From uh, what I. Observe, I think you're having a conversation. Alright? So, not to worry. Um, I think it's a result of the bread you took. Okay, so what will happen is um, I'm going to prescribe the drug for you. Okay. And then you give it to the nurse on your way out to, to give it the drug. Alright, thank you. Um, but meanwhile, um, anytime you want to get a bread, make sure you get a bread that is bromate free. And um, saccharin cream. Mm -hmm. I think it will help, right? Don't look out for that. Smile, it's nothing serious, right? Because you're not the reason why my stomach. Oh, yeah. How do I What's up? Let me there. How are you doing? Zip me. What are you doing? My love. Give me that. Oh, yeah. Let me see too, baby. What am I doing? What's up? What's wrong with you? How are you doing? Daddy had breakfast yesterday and the bread is too good. Since then, it's not been able to go to the I've told you people, you push stop taking all this bread. Listen, that this bread I eat, like, I don't do without it. It's just the bread in my brand, you understand? Okay. Should I? It's called F and F. What's that? F and F. F and Fresh F. Fresh and bread. famous. Wow. Trust me, mom, you're gonna like it. Wow. Sweet bread. Does it contain what the doctor said? Is, is it um, bromate free and saccharine free? Trust me, mom, believe me, it's just, it's just nice. Wow. Bromate free, saccharine free. Trust me, you will like oh, yeah, it. I think See, we should find that bread, right? Fine. The bread is it's rich. It's long lasting. Okay. It's affordable. Okay. Come on, mom. You can like it. Baby, please don't say much. Just go get the bread for your daddy. Take okay. the room from take okay. the money from the room. I'll be right back. Okay. Right. There. Right. Give me that. See you. I'll be right back. Okay, baby. Please. Uh, I need to. I need to. Yes, mama. Ah, first of all. Are you getting? Papa. Papa. Ah, you don't tell me that for empty. Ah, what? This bread. Now the top of town. If we know what's happening. From FIS, and I have friends from family. Ah, my family, not before any small before big person. Uh, Everybody they share from this bread. This fresh, but I keep keep. See, I'm not too bossy now. See, you must see like you make baggy baggy cheap. Fifty, 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 fifty. Anywhere for see. Most important thing, though, the thing food everywhere for my family. Madam, no. Oh, if you get to be for just come, I will supply. No, I beg you, give me. No, forget to bring my bread. I am not worried. I beg. He has no family. He has no family. Fresh and famous bread from you. Yes, from you. Good morning, sir. How are you now? I'm fine, thank you, sir. Is this fresh uh, fresh air? Uh, this is F and F. Wow. Fresh and famous bread. Okay. Have you heard of fresh and famous bread? It is saccharin free and bromate free. It is cheap. It has rich milk. It has enough sugar that will keep you alive, not there, not to make you die. This bread you see here is very affordable. It is everywhere in the market. You don't have to travel to big stores just to get this bread. Even in your neighborhood, in Yakba, very affordable. Wow. You don't like fresh and famous. Even the big chopper, even the poor chopper, even the people don't get all the eater. And if they satisfy them, brother, you don't have a fresh and famous. Please give me four of them. Four, four of them. He has the family. He has. Okay, sir. All those. Let's go, sir. Fresh and famous. The best in town. F and F. F and F. Fresh and famous. Fresh and famous. That's the bread. That's the bread. That's the best. That's the best. So tasty. So tasty. So low. So loving. So tasty. If you taste it, so you will love.
house mates. Right? Mm-hmm. How are you all doing today? Mm-hmm. I can see everyone is looking very casual. Mm-hmm. No one was in the mood of dressing up today. Yeah. It's alright. Sit down. Mm-hmm. Duchess, how are you doing? Your dress looks nice. Can you please give us a rundown of the day's activities at the Royal House today? Good evening once more, my royal housemate, my lead good evening. Okay, this rundown of today's reports. We started today actually a very good one because we had a general morning prayer, all the housemates, and after then we had uh, aerobic, which though I wasn't present because of some health issues, and I'm sorry about that. Then after the aerobic, we had to freshen up before breakfast, which we all wore the F and F t-shirts for and it's actually a very good one. After the breakfast we had some housemaid go to do laundry while others had time to rehearse for their short drama and all of that. While this was going on, some housemates were summoned to the royal court for some reasons. And thereafter we had we were called for lunch and it was actually a good one. In fact most housemates smiled out of the dining room because of what was served. And thereafter, a few hours later, we are called upon to report to the Royal House to present our short play on F and F Bread, which we did. And the two groups actually did wonderfully well. But then the result of the last play was actually announced about the effect of positive and negative effect of social media, negative and positive effect of social media to the society, with the alpha actually had the 85 percent while the game changer 10 percent and that means they all actually got it however we also asked to go for dinner which was actually a surprise because it was so quick we aren't expecting it that early but we still went and i think a lot of us loved it and we smiled out with some you know good thing to bring it down like the smoothie and all that it was actually a good one Thereafter, we asked to prepare for the real court, and here we are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lydia. I want to ask, is there anyone here that is a risk taker? Is there any risk taker in the house? Yes. Everybody is saying yes. <laughs> if I tell you to come to the podium now, the whole place will be quiet. So has anyone taken any risk? so far in life? Any risks that you can remember? Yeah. You can remember? Okay. Who can define risk for us? I need someone to define risk. You can put it in your own words. It doesn't have to be the dictionary definition. In my own word, I would say risk is the biggest bold step a person can take in order to achieve something. All right. Thank you very much. In my own words, I would say risk is actually an action taken, irrespective of the consequence whether it's positive or not. Thank you. Now, let me just give us a dictionary definition because we are going to build up from there. A risk can be defined as the possibility of a chance of danger, loss, or injury. So it's basically doing something that could potentially lead to danger, and then you still go ahead to do it. What rational thinking human being actually does stuff like that? So, is there anyone here that uh, is a risk taker? If you are, come and tell us why. If you're not, you tell us why not. Because trust me, not everyone is a risk taker. Some people just love playing safe in every single thing they do in life. They are always playing safe. But if you're a risk taker, just come and tell us why you are. Uh, Why I said I'm a risk taker is that I like doing things that I'm scared of doing. Like something that my mind will be telling me, this thing might not work, but I'll still go ahead and do it and see what comes out of it. Mm. Thank you. The little money I have, I can actually make way for it to work for me instead. I don't do the Ponzi scheme. I don't do things like MMM, Ultimate Circle, any of those things. But I'm someone who actually look at the business, see the potential. If it's something I can put my money and probably at the end of the month, I get returns. Perfect. Presently, I'm into 102 as well, where I have my money. I don't need to work. But people heard about it initially and they'll be like, I'm saying this is Nigeria, your money will go, things like that. But for the past six months or so, with my other hustle, 
I get paid from that same investment monthly basis and I'm as well looking for things like that businesses that are actually thriving that probably needs people's money instead of if remaining in the bank you get a certain percentage from their earnings monthly so with that alone I think I'm a risk taker because I can actually let my idle cash work for me thank you adding to what you said it's just like you ordering things online like you're trying to start up a business with some people group of company that you don't know you have not met them before you are supposed to send some money and you can only do that if you're a risk taker yeah. you are doing it because you're not doing it because you know maybe it might work it's, it's two two places it might work it might not work but because you are a risk taker you will just do it and see the outcome thank you i think i've I took my own risk three years ago when I newly, four years ago, when I newly got my admission to the National Pre University. As a young lady who needed to see herself through school, I need to work. Because it was a part time, but I need to focus more on my education. I was working, I was going to school. And same time that time, I decided to join to go and learn how to sew. So that period, everybody was like, this is impossible. You can't be working, you go to school and you are learning how to sew. So every morning I woke up, I go to my sewing shop to learn how to sew. I close two, I go to work, and some days when I have exams to write or lectures to catch up with on Saturday, I am up everywhere for one year plus. And throughout that period, I never felt sick. Until the day I graduated from the tailoring school, I got to realize that I've taken one of the bold steps in life by achieving three things with one stone. And I think I'm a strong woman, and I took that boat bricks, and I succeeded. Thank you. <clears throat> I would say that uh, I'm a risk taker. Most of the people out there know who I am. Sometimes the word impossibility is not found in my dictionary. <clears throat> I try to do the extraordinary, not minding the resultant effect. Well, I would say that the first trick I took some time ago was uh, leaving Asaba around after 10, driving back to Abia State without lights. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't easy. It was very, very challenging. But by God's grace, I had to monitor the road and all that, though I nearly hit a car that night. But all thanks to God, I arrived at Abia State safe and sound. Then the next week I took was uh, last year, I happened to quit my job because of the love I have for my acting career. I worked with uh, Liberation Natural Medicine for about one year plus, getting to two years. I had some savings. Now I wanted to quit the job. I wrote uh, to the management. I dropped a, re a resignation letter that I was about to quit the job which they asked me not to, but because of this love I still have for this movie making, I had to quit. Then I invested 1,285,000 in an online business, hoping that everything would work out fine. But to my greatest surprise, my money got down the rail. That was July last year. <laughs> I felt like dying. <laughs> Some of my friends, knew what I was passing to then I had to start afresh again. I had to pick up my pieces because though the money I was chasing was really much, but it couldn't work out the way I planned it. There are some other risks I've taken in life and uh, some went out well, some turned out positively, while some turned out to be positive. So that is just it. Thank you so much. I, for one, take risk. And, uh, on several locations, it has its own repercussions. I see risk as a two-way thing, the positive and the negative sides of it. As so I always prepare my mind for the worst. And in that event, I don't get uh, shocked when it comes to me. Now, the two significant risks I've taken in life that I will never forget are the experiences I want to share with us. The first was in... Uh, I think around 400 level. I was just about writing my exams before 
the application. I made uh, I made an application. I was about traveling to Cyprus at the time, so I came to the embassy for an interview. So that period, I had to forfeit my exams just for that interview. I came for the interview and forfeited my exams. The truth about it is, I didn't make it to travel to Cyprus. I forfeited my exams, and then that cost me an extra year in school. And that period, I wrote the exams afterwards, and I had to spill over for the second time again. So that was the risk I took that cost me that. Because I, I had already given up. I said I was going completely. As a business person, you are a risk taker. For me, I've been doing business from, since when I was little. In fact, part of the business I do is to give out soft loan. Yes. I give soft loan to people and get profit in return. Some I know, some I don't know. Uh, some persons will tell you, okay, I'll pay you just a month, and that period, you will not get your money. But that cannot stop me from doing more business because <laughs> it's what it has to happen. You have to do, keep on doing business, you know, to grow. So because of um, some persons swindle you of your money, doesn't mean I should stop taking risk. That's what I want to say. Thank you. Well, I'm a very strong risk taker. I believe in the get rich or die trying factor. The first time I took a risk was a very serious one. It was 2017. There was this Ponzi scheme, and my friend told me about it, and he said, Anything you put in a week, you get double of it. I was not having any money with me, but I was just positive that if I put my money, it will come out. So I called my girlfriend. She works in a school. And she's in charge of their accounts. She, she, money is always with her. So I asked her, I said, do you have any money in your possession? She said, yes. I said, how much? She said, close to 600000 I said, okay, can you help me with 200000 I'll give you back next week. She was curious, like, what do you need 200000 I said, don't worry. I possibly said, I'll give you a profit. She was scared, but she sent the money. So I invested it. And as a Catholic, I had one faith. Pray always. Something good will definitely happen. In as much as I was scared, I was praying. So I had to involve some other friends. So I don't, if I must go down, let me just see how we'll be able to console ourselves. So I called two of my friends. I told them about it. One invested 100,000, the other 50,000. But thank God, seven days later, we went to the office with our receipts. I was given 380,000. My friend collected 90, the other one 40. Now, the crazy thing is, as they paid us, they now told us that they might still do another promo, which means it's going to last another seven days, and anything you put, you are still going to get double of it. Being the kind of person I am, I wasn't scared, though. Seriously speaking, I wasn't scared. I was just wondering how you just keep doubling money for me in seven days. But I said, okay, it sounds good. I said, so if I put this 380 now, I'm getting times two of it. They say, yes. I said, okay, we need to go and relax now after taking such risk. I invested 350. We were drinking, the beer was not going down well. I was just asking myself, what have you done? What if this money does not come back? You are supposed to return 200 back. So I called my girlfriend, I told her, see, something went wrong, you can't get the money out here last week. She said, ah, if, the, if the month ends, she's supposed to give her account. Ah. I said, no, Wanda, before month end, as God will have it, seven days' time, we went, and I collected my money. Everybody collected their money. Now, where they finished us, <laughs> because it's like, it's a game. They keep giving you attractive offers. If you are smart enough, 
get what you've gotten and run. But if you are a strong risk taker, you will never give up until that Ponzi scheme crashes. And that's the kind of person I am. So they now told us that if you put 100,000 in three months, they will give you 1 million naira. And that 1 million naira, we are going to get the check by the wife of the governor of the state I was then. <laughs> that was the magic. I said, for them to involve the wife of the governor, this is real. I told my friends, I said, me, I will invest. They were scared. So where, where I did something crazy was, I didn't tell them I was going to invest more than one account. I just told them I would do 100,000. But they didn't know till today that I invested three accounts. And it was my brother that gave me the advice, because he's also a risk taker. I said, just put 50,000, play three odd. <laughs> I said, what if this thing crashes? He said, no worry. <laughs> I said, no, I will not play this thing myself because I was scared. I know how to forecast the game very well, for real. But when you want to just take that mad risk, that's when you believe that any club can beat Barcelona, as good as they are. He just told me, OK, I'll send the game to you. He said, play Barcelona 1x, Madrid straight win, I think, and Chelsea straight win. That day, 90 minutes, Barcelona lost. I didn't check it though. He just called me. He was laughing. Why did he laugh? I said, Oh my, don't call too. I said, <laughs> <laughs> And that was how I lost that game. So since then, I told myself I was going to take a break. Maybe when I've made serious money, I'll come back to taking risks. Thank you. When I get to on the chat, There was this bike man. I don't know any place. I don't know that. The place I'm supposed to enter the bus that is going to Okozo is very close to me. I don't know any place now. I say, Oga, please come. Please, I'm going to Okozo. Take me to a place that will enter bus. That will take me there. I said, ah, you foul. Ah, ah. It's, it's very far. I don't know that. It's that place I'm looking at. That place, the bus there. Ah, ah. I said, eh? Okay, how much? He said, 10,000. <laughs> ah, I said, is it that far? I said, you don't know. It's, it's very big and white. <laughs> it was late in the night. I said, ah, wow. What am I going to do here? It was only me. I don't have any other choice than to give him the money. Mm -hmm. Bring out 10,000 naira. I can't take it. And I give it to the bike man. I'm not saying that December is good for him. So uh, I enter the bike. The bike man just turned around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Drop me there. Uh, <laughs> I said, ah! <laughs> but he said that the place is very far now. <laughs> no, see? It's like, see, you just uh, come new for this area, bah? <laughs> Yeah, this is what I do, you make your eye open small. Yeah? I said, oh God, oh God, you don't make sense now. You know where that money will get here, rich. He said, that one I talk, oh, as they be now, I don't enter my own way. Oh. You find your own way, oh. this area I talk, oh. I don't know how I shall pay that time. So as he carry me go, he come be say, now only three people there inside that bus. You mean like six or seven people? Our passengers to complete the seat. So I waited, I waited. Around one thirty. People don't complete. The bus zoom off. Get into a coso civil center. Everywhere was quiet. Dark. There was no light. Then the boss man dropped me. I stepped out of the, bo out of the bus. I was standing uh, close to one woman uh, restaurant, waiting for the guy. Not knowing that the guy was not even in that location. 
and I'll send one guy, Melody, to come and pick me. Though I called, and I called the guy, Melody. Melody now came and picked me. Now, I say, I might call like I say, this one money don't go, maybe money no, they don't see up my money for this one. Why I come? After the audition in the morning, they said, ah, Peter, ah, you act very well. You are good. You are talented. Ah, ah this guy. Ah, you too much. Ah, I don't know that. Ah, where they do like that, the money they won't collect. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah. I said, okay. Uh, if you want to participate in this movie, you know, for us to give you a role, you have to pay 30,000 naira, 15,000 naira for registration. You have to register under us. Uh, that 15,000, the remaining 15,000 now would be like, uh, you know, for the welfare, other things that involve. I said, shoot. And that 30,000 naira, my only money will remain for my pocket. Because I have passion for it. I look up, I look down. I was confused. I didn't know what to do. I moved with my feet. Worried. My mind was not rest. I was not relaxed at that moment. I was just kind of thinking, what am I going to do? Because of the passion, I have to give them that money. I brought out that tax down there and gave to the guy. I said, God, bro, if you don't have 5K, give me. So that the reason I come here, look at him, look at what can go my house. He said, I'm not sure like that. Arguments, arguments. I have to give you the 30,000 naira. I said, OK. And I brought out the 30,000 naira and gave to the guy. Now, risk, oh. That's why I say risk, passion, believe. It will make you believe in yourself. You have passion for something to make you take a very big risk. A drastic decision that will make you do things that you didn't plan to do. But all thanks to uh, Laura, I've been a child. Again, I've been on my continuity. She, she was very close to me during the audition and the filming stuff. But what shocked me that after spending the whole morning, they will give you a script to read. After reading, they say, by your action, the camera is not on. Guy, <laughs> <laughs> ah, you do a good act. Ah, you are a good actor. Another person, enter. If one day close to behind the camera, and I tell you, I'll be come out. We don't know that the camera is off, so back time is there. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> so, because I, I was left with nothing, I didn't have any money with me. Damn. <laughs> My heart, there was this heartbeat. I started thinking, you know, what have I gotten myself into? So I started begging for money, transport money. I started begging. Me, when they manage my bad business, more in the day where I work, I can't cry for money for road. You know you <laughs> So, but thanks to Laura. Okay, sorry, Princess Adora. That was her name. Abino, Princess Adora. She was the one that gave me money. She gave me 7,000 naira to go back. I didn't know what to tell her. I was like, after she gave me, after she gave me that money, after she gave me that money, I was like, there was, there was this uh, amorous law towards her because there was no more, I didn't have any hope again. I didn't have any hope. I feel like crying. Huh? If you try to talk to this guy, this guy, will, if you are saying up, oh, this guy will be talking down. If you are moving front, the guy will be going back. So I was confused. I said, ah, what am I going to do now? But all thanks to Princess Adora. I gave me money that day to uh, travel back home. It wasn't easy. Man, my heart had been beating while I was sitting there. Because whenever I want to share this experience, uh, the thing that always pay me, sure. But um, uh, my school days, I used to be very, very active. I like to dance. I like to be creative in dramas and the rest. 
I was the cab you see in my school, like a show, very social person. And I like events. I used to hold events in school. So I said to myself, I said, when you're done with school, you're going to have to come back to this same school and do something bigger. So I was done with school. After, after school, I went there. I was like, I want to do an event. They said, have you served? I said, no. They said, go for your NYC and come back. After NYC, I still tendered the proposal. And my visa is so many. Like, he knows me very well. And I was like, ah, are you still alive? I said, yes, I'm alive. He said, okay, that's good. Uh, what are you doing here? I, I, I know you're done. I said, yes, I came for an event. So I gave him the proposal. He saw it and he liked it. And he had to sign it. That was April 2018. So I was based in Lagos, schooled in Enugu. I was traveling all the way to Enugu, Lagos, preparing for the event. After approving it, I had to contact some artists, uh, one of the leads down for drivers. I was wanting to bring them to school and as well other young artists. I contacted Rema then. Rema never even blew, they never even signed up. So along the line, I was walking towards this thing, looking at the success, calculating how much tickets and everything, a VIP, regular, ah, Baba done the 67 million, I said, I don't blow. I was just doing all of this stuff. Then I printed banners, printed tickets, the design, everything cost money. Two weeks to my event, you know, schools now, if you are not wanting to bring in some people into your event, you just want to crash it for you. There was this rat that was in school, I was close to the VC. I was at the uh, reception, wanting to see the VC. And the guy just came and saw the flyer, I was like, nice one, nice one, December 15th, hey! You go go away, don't worry, I go every follow VC talk. And the guy went inside. And the next thing I saw was, the secretary told me, the VC does not want to see you anymore. I say, ha, which guy will have with this? Come next week. I came next week. The VC said, come next two weeks. I say, God. Then he just gave me a letter that has been terminated. I say, how? What's the person not approved since about seven months ago? Then he said I should go and look for another venue to do the event. I don't do banner, I don't do ticket, everything. I was under pressure. According to what Izzy said, if you have that drive and the passion, you just keep on moving. I had to go to the shop right in Inugu to rent the hall. The hall was 650,000 for seven hours. Give them 300,000. Contacted my uh, um, graphic designer to do another design. Had to talk to downfall drivers. I won't, uh, I won't be bringing them anymore. Had to call down costs, hotel bills, and the rest. I did that. Then at the, at the end of the day, about um, two days to my event, I was hearing rumors that week, yeah, that, that week to my event, saying an artist is coming to school, an artist is coming to school. Not knowing what I wanted to do, that same rat was cooking with the president and the rest. They should do that event in school. Then two days to my own event, outside of school now, because I was wanting to take out the student from school to my event, to town. Then two days to my event, they brought Piruzi to school. Almost as I see, I had to run to school. When they said, well, Peruzi don't show, Peruzi don't show, they gave him about 1.1 million, like 1.5 million to come to school. I went backstage, I see Peruzi like this, but why don't come on shit? He blamed my tear and slap. Up to date, if I see Peruzi on TV, I divest for him. But it's not his fault too. But if I don't see, I don't, I don't hate him. Because I felt he was the one that, but it's not his fault. It was that same rat in school. So I did my show. It didn't really turn out well because the crowd wasn't that much. People had to come from Lagos and the rest. Even my dad came. The comedians and the rest. More if you see my hall, eh? You'll be like in a Russia idea. Very cool. This AC, they were everywhere. Still and still, the show held. And after the show, I wanted to run mad because the views were just too much. Bounce out the way for me outside. Decorate out the way for me. Different people don't the way for me, but with my balance. I felt like vanishing. I was just saying once in my mind, God, just help me close my eye, make I just sleep. Because I never sleep. I did, I did not even bait. I just had to change backstage, just coordinating things. But things went sideways. I was crying. My team were telling me, no, no, no. Baba, no do this thing. No, no, no. After the show, I was in depth of uh, 
I spent a total of 2.1 million. I was in debt of 650,000. The whole said, the whole media said, you never complete your payment, you don't go anywhere. I was begging and begging. After I left, I said I was not living any good. They said, if you don't live any good, they will kidnap you here, they will kill you because you are holding too much uh, bill. I had to go to Lagos. They gave me about five drip, 12 injections. What was the sickness all about? I don't just know. But my brain don't, I don't, I don't scatter. So I beat my chest and I said, people were calling me, all those uh, ushers, the rest. I was not picking any call anymore. I just text, when I have your money, I'll pick your call. That's why I gave everybody. So I had to beat my chest and I said, Baba, you have to walk. You can't be on this bed, money will come to you. And I made a promise to myself, I said, I have failed, but impossibility is nothing. Anything you set your mind to, you can conquer. I made a vow, I said, you're going to Enugu. That was December, yeah? So then we entered into 2019. I made a vow, I said, you're going to Enugu with your car, a brand new car, and nothing will stop you. So you have to stand up and walk. I stood up, started walking, doing business. Money came. First of all, I cleared my bill. Went to a store, I bought my own dream car. White Toyota Spider Sport. I bought it for myself. Customized my plate number. Straight to Enugu. And when I land in Enugu, the guy see me like this. I just they flash my light. <laughs> I was so happy. I was so bold. Hey, thank you, sir. FCMB. Running out. Well, the possibility is nothing. So I conquer. Thank you. Thank you. We've all shared really interesting stories today. But there's something I would like us to note. When taking risks, please take reasonable risks. I know people say, ah, there's a risk taker. I would just try reasonable risk. I mean, don't try to invest in a Ponzi scheme. I'm one of the victims of MMMO. I lost like 300 and something thousand in MMM that year. It was so painful because that year, I was in final year just before. I, I graduated just before MMM and stuff. So it was like all the savings I had from uni. Like, I had a bulk of savings. I like, ah. This money, oh, you can do this, oh, you can do this. One combo, I did not see. Like a week to when it was my turn to bring out the money, I'd be, how was I married today? When they said the site was not working again. I just had to laugh at myself and, you know, I wasn't going to kill myself. So, please, you can take risks, but take reasonable ones. Don't invest in something that you know is not good. It's not genuine, it's not genuine, but you just want to do try, try and error. That's not the kind of risk we are talking about today. And... Why, why it's good to take, take risks is because it eliminates the question of what if. What if I took that trip? What if I just started that business? What if I learned that trade? What if I made that investment? You would never get the answers if you actually never try. So take that risk today and see what comes out of it. Because even if you fail, you know that you'd have definitely gotten some knowledge that would even help you achieve more success in the future. Definitely. Remember that no knowledge is wasted. You might not need it today. Just like our guest told us the other day, he has, a, I think, a box of ideas, and then at some point, he just picks which one is needed at that particular time. It might not seem reasonable right now, but like in the next two years, that idea could actually mean something. So take that risk today. It might just be what will make you blue. It might just be your first $1 million knocking on the door. <laughs> okay, Royal Housemates, it's been an interesting session today. The courts will reconvene. The royalties were all summoned to the royal court to address a rather pressing matter, defaulting royals. It was a gripping encounter as the royal enforcer with the consents of the court sentenced defaulters to two days house arrest with punishment attached. Say